Hey everybody, I'm Bobby with Tech360.tv and this is a very, very special video. Um, you know, one of the perks of doing this is getting your hands on equipment that's not really on the market yet. And what I have in my hands today is very special and I want to thank Nikon Singapore for allowing us to have a brief hands on. We have the Nikon Z7 in the studio today. So first and foremost, let's talk about the design of this. It's a very robust feeling camera. Um, it's weather sealed, lens and body is, and it feels very high quality in the hands. And the grip is fantastic. Now, I have quite large hands. My last finger, my pinky, is just kind of hanging off the bottom of it. But otherwise, the grip just feels very, very natural. It's got good weight to it. It's not super light. It's not overly heavy, especially with this 2470 on it. It feels really solid and a camera that you can carry on pretty much all day long. Let's talk about the EVF. The EVF is sharp. I actually, I had no problems at all. This is high resolution EVF. I think it's about 3.6 million pixels. So you are getting a high resolution on that aspect. And the screen on the back of it's bright, vibrant. It's articulate, not fully articulate, but you can swivel it out at the bottom and it helps out for low angle shots. But everything feels solid. Buttons do, dials feel great. It feels premium and it is premium. 45 megapixel full frame sensor in this bad boy. Let's talk about the lens. Now, this is going to be the kit lens that ships with this. This is the 2470 f4, and the lens feels high quality. I mean, this is an S-line lens. This is the new uh, for the Z mount, so it feels really good. You can adjust where the aperture would be on some lenses. You can adjust that to do different functions, let's say exposure or aperture. But I have to say the image quality doesn't feel like an f4. This feels like, like a 2.8. I was actually very surprised by the images this was taking and the color. Shooting raw, the color is beautiful. I mean, you might wanna do some editing for of course you wanna make more creative edits or so forth, but the skin tones look great. Colors are vibrant in raw, mind you. Impressive. But let's talk about some of the uh, functionality that goes in this. Now, of course, you have the Z mount. Now that is Nikon's new mount, but you can actually get an adapter to put the F mount lenses on it. And the cool thing about this is that any of the new F mount lenses is gonna have autofocus. It's gonna perform the same as it would on your DSLR, but except on this mirrorless. And I believe Nikon is really pushing that, especially with the software, to make a seamless experience between your two systems. So if you have current, let's say you're using a D850 or D750 right now, and you say, I, how is this gonna perform? Fine, no problem, use your glass on that. Put it on this. I mean, obviously it's gonna, depending on your lens, it could be very, very big and a little bit overbalanced, but overall, it'll work. Let's talk about the card slot for a moment. Now, Nikon has put a single card slot in this and a lot of people have complained, but why, why not two? But what they have done, which I don't think people are really talking about out there, is they put an XQD card slot in there and a CF Express that will be coming out later on uh, next year with a firmware update. Now the XQD is a much higher quality, more durable card than an SD card, and it's faster too. 440 megabyte transfer rates versus I believe 300 for the SD card, the UHS-2. So I would say before anybody starts complaining about the single card slot, try it out with the XQD card. You might find you're not gonna be crashing as much as you thought you would be, and it might be good enough. I do like that there's a little LCD display here on the top of this. This is nice, you get to see your information and so forth like that, but you get to see it all through your EVF or through the uh, back screen. So, I mean, there's a lot of variations to where you wanna see your information, but to each their own. I like the EVF first and foremost. Let's talk about autofocus. Let's talk about autofocus because when I watch some of the earlier videos on the market, people are saying, oh, the autofocus is a little bit slow, this and that. I've been pushing it in low light to very low light extreme. You'll see in some of the photos we've been posting up to more, let's say, indoors and so forth. And I'm not finding an issue with it. Um, it focuses pretty good. There are times where you will see maybe it's red. It says red box, but it's actually focused in green. So that's just a slight delay, but the picture is focused. And you'll see in the images that I'm posting up in this video that they are sharp and they are beautiful images, especially 45 megapixels of raw. Ooh, just, it's like having a warm chocolate chip cookie out of the oven. It tastes so good, it looks so good. That's what these images are like. What else? Battery life. Now, this is interesting because people were saying, wait a second, it's the same battery that's in the D850 and the D750, and they're only saying on the website it's only gonna be like 300 shots. What, what is Nikon doing? Hold those horses a second. Because while it technically is the same size battery, and might be the same overall battery as the D850 and D750 is actually some new technology in the battery. 
So, according to our reps we've talked to, with 4K video, about 20 minutes of 4K video, with shooting in RAW and in JPEG, you're getting around 800 shots plus including video before the battery goes down. I'm more than happy with that. I don't shoot 800 shots a day. Now, if you're a professional, you might do that if you're doing high frame rates, but for me, that's gonna last me throughout a day and if I have to get a second battery, then I get a second battery, okay? Cool, let's get that out of the way. What else is there? Let's talk about the menu system. Um, the menu system is intuitive. I have to say this. I, it's, I mean, I'm not used to shooting with Nikon a lot. It's, I'm used to shooting with other brands. It took me a few minutes to sort of get where everything is at, but it's actually pretty good. It's pretty good. I mean, everything's pretty organized in a sense where you understand where photo, video is, your ISOs, your shutter speeds, all that stuff there, and you have an information button on the back if you want to access your, your focus points and so forth. Uh, face detection works. Let's talk about face detection since we're talking about focus points. I know I'm going all around on this video a second because there's a lot in my head to get through, and this is the first impressions, but I do want to tell you a little bit about this. Um, it does have face detection, and it does it in an interesting way. Now, if you have, let's say, more than one person in the image, it will have a yellow box around the face and it'll have an arrow. So then you just use the joystick on the back and you can sh shift from face to face to get which face you want in focus, which is really cool. Now, they're saying there's no eye focus. People go, why is there no eye focus? But they've got something else called pinpoint focus. And it's this tiny little square and you can just nail focus. And I'm talking about really nailed, especially during tough situations where it's hard to get focus, let's say between you're shooting something in the foreground or background when you've got leaves or flowers, it nails focus, no problems at all. Blackout on this, in terms of shooting, minimal, doesn't really bother me. I believe in some of the earlier hands-on impressions, some people were complaining about it, but I think with, since the firmware update, it's pretty normal. I mean, this is a 45 megapixel sensor on this, so you can't expect high speeds like a 24 megapixel. I have no issues, especially shooting a high frame rate, no issues at all with it, so. Let's talk about video for a second because yes, this shoots 4K at 30 frames per second and you can do 1080 at 60 frames per second or you can do 1080 at 120 frames per second slow-mo. You've got N-Log profile on this now and you can record into the XQD card at 8-bit at 420 and you can record out at 10-bit at 422. And I gotta tell you, in our test with the 4K, uh, the focusing is really beautiful. It's just a nice gradual focusing from uh, subject to subject, as you can see in our sample video. I mean, it, um, it's not jittery at all. You can adjust that how you want it to focus, but it really feels very natural and very fluid. Overall, the video on this, no issues at all. So that pretty much wraps up my first impressions on the Nikon Z7. Um, can't wait to get my hands on this long term, take this out on night shoots, really take it through its paces. The 2470 f4 S lens is beautiful. I'm really impressed with the quality of the images that's coming out of this lens. Autofocus is fast. Build quality feels good. I love that it's, you know, it's weather resistant lenses. The body is, it feels very durable in the hands. And I think that anybody with a Nikon system who already has a DSLR, but they want something small and mirrorless, definitely take a serious look at this because you can use all your lenses on that. And anybody that's looking to a mirrorless camera, this should be near the top of your list. With that, any comments or questions you have, leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook. Until the next one, take care.